from St. Vincent and somehow we have managed to survive as an identifiable group of people. We have managed to preserve our language and our cultural traditions up to this point in time. I think that the main reason for that is that the Garifuna person is not individualistic. The traditional Garifuna person is a member of a group and he does not rely on himself as an individual for its own survival. So that this, there has been a strong sense of community among us. In that community, we have spoken our language, we have performed our rituals, we have gone about the business of surviving, and our culture, our music, our ritual, our everything has been interwoven into that way of life. <laughs> Garifuna Dua respects themselves. Garifuna Dua respects older people. Garifuna Dua respects the environment. Now, if I'm related to the earth, then I'm not going to harm the earth. If I'm related to you, I'm going to be good to you, and you're going to be good to me. Hence, Aubu Amurinu, that concept of reciprocity, is very key to the Garifuna understanding of who he is and the cosmos around him. I would like to think that the Garifuna um, understanding of its spirituality and its relationship with God uh, is different than the Santeria and the Shango and the Obia. There should be no confusion at all in your being a Garifuna and you being a Christian. There isn't a saint in our spirituality as such that we make sacrifices for. It's purely the ancestor. We believe that the ancestor, the older the ancestor, the wiser the ancestor, and the more respect that ancestor should have from us. And so if we rely on the ancestor then, the ancestor is going to lead us in the correct way. Many will argue, especially the religious leaders of the established churches, will argue that there is no such thing as a Garifuna religion. Um, I will always maintain that there is that height of spirituality in the Garifuna that it can qualify to be a religion. Now, I would imagine that a lot of people would contend that it is not a religion because they do not see it as a way of life. But Garifuna dual is a way of life. I'm comfortable with living it. I'm comfortable with being a Garifuna. As a matter of fact, before I'm a priest, I'm a Garifuna. So I always say when I'm introducing myself, I am a Garifuna priest, not the other way around. Because I do not see a contradiction and because I do not see a separation, I am comfortable in the temple, in the ancestral house. I, I have no problem. I am comfortable at a night night. I am comfortable with the Ayub Amir Hani when we're bathing the dead. Um, lemes, as a matter of fact, the word that is commonly used for mass. Lemes is not mass as such. Lemes is uh, a celebration of, uh, of healing. All right, like all of our celebrations are, celebrations of healing. If I am going to be the priest that 
The church expects me to be, I have to be who I am. Otherwise, to use the words of my bishop, I would be the shell. I would be a shell of a priest with no substance. <laughs> When we have the Gu, when we have the ancestral celebrations in the ancestral house, it's not only for this family, but we invite people. People are supposed to come from all over. And when people come from Labuga, for instance, from Honduras, even from the United States, they bring songs with them. Okay? And that is one way of. Um, Expanding of our, uh, expanding our repertory, if you, if you wish, of the songs that we know. There are songs associated with different parts of the Dugu. The part where we meet the uh, Luguri who go out to collect fish and the seafood and, and they are met at the seaside and there is a procession. There is a particular type of song for that. songs for the opening part of the video. There are songs for the offering. There are songs for killing chickens. And there are also some songs where the buye is required to come out with his maracas, his rattle, and there are those where he's not supposed to do that, and you're not supposed to mix them up. One of the unique things to me about the Garifuna spirituality is that the sacred and the profane seem to exist simultaneously. In the Western understanding of religion and spirituality, that could never happen. When you're taking the food out of the ancestral house to go and either bury it or throw it into the sea, the drums have to play. There has to be dancing and merrymaking when that is going on. There is a lot of healing that takes place around Beluye. Right after the person is buried, we have the nine days of prayer. The nine night itself is a very... There is a lot of healing that takes place around Beluye. Right after the person is buried, we have the nine days of prayer. The nine night itself is a very sad moment because that is when you say the final farewell. Drums is a new invention for the Beluria, but people used to clap hands and they used to dance and they went all night. Then we graduated from uh, the clapping of hands to boxes. You remember the times when we used to have boxes, wooden boxes. Then we graduated from there to Tukupara. Then from there, the drums came, so that we have drums now for the, for the celebration. When I first listened to those drums, when I first saw this girl in sand bite dancing and singing, uh, like shouting, crying, smiling, laughing at the same time, moving her hips in such a way with the, those drums. I was like, what's that? Is that a Beluria? Is that Nine Night? That happened when somebody's dead? Oh my God, that's something to be known for the whole world. 
Now, a lot of people, and I think um, this is from the Western influence, a lot of people do not like, especially today, do not like the levity, the, 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 the celebration, the singing and the dancing um, at Beluria. But that too is healing. Yeah, yeah.